Hey guys, happy Wednesday. I'm Connie Henriquez Kimmel, formerly Connie Henriquez. I just got married in December. It's like a whole new name, but um, it'll be Connie Kimmel soon enough. But anyway, I'm super excited to be here. Tonight is gonna be really fun. It's all about helping you explore how to be a better parent, how to start loving life with your child. So it's gonna be really good just to know what we're gonna review as far as information. And if you guys have any questions, like feel free to put them in the comments. I, I, I'm definitely good at multitasking. I swear I have ADD, but um, what we're gonna go over tonight is we're gonna go over the three biggest mistakes most parents make when it comes to their kid. And this is a really good one and one that most, people, most parents don't even realize. The second one is why ADD and ADHD, anxiety, depression, low self-esteem are at an all-time high in kids and what to do about it. And just so you guys know, I'm like reading off a prompter here because um, I had some technical difficulties. And the other one is to medicate your child or not. That's another big question that I get asked a lot. And the other one is the truth about gaming, Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. So again, if you have something specific, you have a question, just put it in the comments, but otherwise we will get started. So the first thing, and this is very common as far as one of the biggest mistakes that parents make. Um, and the first thing is, and it's gonna sound really weird, but I find this a lot, especially when parents reach out to me for the first time. So typically what will happen is a parent will either hear of me, be referred to me, they're a Google teen life coach, I come up, Facebook, whatever the case may be, a parent reaches out and they call me and they you know, say, I, I'm concerned about my child, they tell me a little bit about their child, and then they tell me whether they got divorced or they're thinking about getting divorced or there's some problem in their relationship. And I always say to the parent, and this is what I want you to know as a parent too, you cannot feel guilty. And for some reason, and I'm not gonna say for some reason, for reasons that you probably were taught to feel this way, but so many parents feel guilty as if they're supposed to be perfect, um, as if you should know what you're doing, or if you decide that your marriage is not working and you choose you, congratulations, and you decide to get divorced, women feel guilty about leaving their relationship or men feel guilty because of the kid or any type of decision that you make or any even mess ups that you've done, the guilt. So I'm gonna tell you why this is a bad thing. First of all, you're human. So you need to give yourself a break. You need to give yourself a break, definitely. But what happens is, as a parent, if you feel guilty, that's your energy. So if you're trying to have a relationship with your child and your child is not responding, or let's say you're just trying to be the leader of the house because you are the leader of the house, if your energy is guilt, your child is going to feel that and they're going to take advantage of that. And they may take advantage of you because you feel guilty. So what I always say, and I say this to every single adult that I work with, as well as every mom, you need to own every decision you make. It doesn't matter if your child understands it or not. It doesn't matter if anyone else understands it or not, or agrees with it or not. You need to own your decisions. The other flip side of that is if you messed up, if you basically dropped your kid on their head, and I'm joking with that, but seriously, that's what I mean, you need to get over it. You're human, right? So tonight is all about how do you move forward in a more positive way? And tonight is not about judgment or you know focusing on things that you may have done wrong or things that you might have wanted to do differently. Tonight is how do you move forward in the most positive way, in the most beneficial way for both of you and your family. And so do not feel guilty. And on the flip side, on the start loving flip side, you need to own all your decisions. And just kind of circling back to divorce, because that's kind of like a common one. I always say to my parents, if you got divorced, congratulations, because by getting divorced, you chose you. That example to your child to say, hey, you know what? Mommy and daddy outgrew each other, which is fine. It happens. And that's normal. And in fact, it's more common than we know. And because mommy chose, and I'm going to just use mommy because it's easy for me, but it could be mommy and daddy, whatever. But 
because mommy chose happiness and she wanted to choose herself, she's exiting this relationship. It doesn't mean I don't love you, but it means I love me too. And that teaching that to a child early on is huge. So don't neglect by owning your decisions that you really are representing to your child how to be the leader in their life by setting the example of you doing what's right for you. So that's one with guilt, and I find that common. Number two, and I see this a lot, is I'm going to say this. It's going to sound harsh. I don't really mean it, but you kind of get what I mean. It's not having your own life. So very often I work with kids. They're like 12, 13, 14, and mom is way too involved in their child's life. And the reason why this is not an ideal thing is because, first of all, mom has an emotion. Mom has... (laughs) It's Wednesday night. Mom has an emotional investment in her child. So mom is way too connected to what's going on in that child's life. So if mom doesn't have a life of her own, she lives vicariously through her kid. Her child then needs to go into all the sports and needs to be social and have a million friends and mom's very involved. What happens is that adds extra pressure on your child. First of all, if my mom was involved with my life when I was a teen, I would have had a heart attack. The one thing I will say, which is so funny that I'm reminded of this, because I do see this a lot with parents that I work with. I remember as a kid, back in my generation and probably yours if you're watching this too, we used to, we didn't have social media, so we did notes, right? You'd had a piece of paper, you'd like write a note on it, you'd hand it out to your friends, you know, you'd come home with like a, a pocket full of notes, right? And it had like, you know, Bobby looked at me today or, oh, he's so cute, right? Like random stuff. And I remember the one thing my mom never did, which I, I guess I did appreciate it, but I appreciate it more now. If she was cleaning our room or like going through our stuff or like emptying our bags out, she would never read our notes. Now I will tell you, it's probably to help herself because there's probably stuff she didn't want to know, but there was a privacy factor. And I think so often now, parents neglect to realize that there should be some kind of privacy factor. And there are so many things that parents are doing. And listen, I get it with social media. Parents are concerned and, and like, I get that. But what happens is your child has to be somewhat independent too. They need their privacy. So sometimes I see parents that have like, you know, you could see on their phone, like they could read everything their kid does, the text and stuff. And like, think about it. Like, that's not the best way to build a relationship with your child by knowing everything about them. You know, it's about giving them the confidence to be them and the independence to be them and trusting and having open communication that they could share with you if things, if they need you or if things are going, you know, not right and and, and they need assistance. So I think one of the things to be mindful of having your own life and remember you're a mom, but you're a person and you were a person before being a mom. So if there are things that you love, do them. If there are things that you want to do, make a priority and do them. And what happens is often moms feel guilty. There's that guilt word again for taking care of themselves as opposed to giving everything to their child. And the reason why that's bad is because if you don't take care of you, you can't love your child in the same way as if you were taking care of you. So if there are things that you want to pursue and you want to develop yourself and you, and you want to take classes or there's something you want to pursue, make sure you make the time to make yourself a priority. And again, this is the example you're teaching your child. You do not want your child to think their world, res, re, you know, your world revolves around them because what happens is you're giving them a full sense of security. You're not going to be around forever. Unfortunately, the only person that per, The only person that child will have for their entire life is themselves. That is it. That's why in my coaching and in my Start Loving Life philosophy, it's about teaching. Thanks, Hector, my dad, who, you know, drilled it in my head. It's about teaching self-sufficiency and independence from everyone, knowing that you have the capability to be successful, to be happy and to be confident without anybody. And you want to give that same example to your child, because like I said, as a parent, you're not going to be here forever. So if you don't have a life and you're too much in your child's life and you don't give them the freedom to screw up and the freedom to pursue things and the freedom to like just be their own person, then you're not really 
helping them. So make sure you're taking care of yourself too. And when I say that, it doesn't mean getting your hair done and get your nails done, and that's nice too. But it's about doing things that are gonna better you and develop you to be that best person and to be that best mom. Because when you're happy, you're gonna be better to your kid. You're gonna be better to your husband. You're gonna be more inspirational to what an example of happiness looks like. When mom is happy first, that's the best example you can give a kid. The third thing, and I see this often too, it's when you have a child and your child becomes a priority. And I'm not gonna say your child isn't important, of course your child's important, but I want you to take a step back and I want you to remember the relationship that created the child. And so often, when you have a child, your relationship suffers. And the reason why it does is because it's no longer about the two people that created the relation, the, the child, it's now all about the child. And so again, you are giving an example of what love is about. And so make sure you nurture that relationship. And just like anything in life, if you want something to thrive, you need to nurture it. If you don't, what happens? It falls by the wayside, people get resentful, people get frustrated, and that's not fun for any relationship. So just be really mindful to appreciate your partner and make sure that you are scheduling times together. Make sure it's not all about your kids. Make sure it's about yourselves and give that example to your child. You know, where it's a Friday night, no, it's daddy and I's date night. Like we're going out to dinner and we're going to a movie. I know it's COVID, you're not, but you know what I mean. So teach your child that, that their relationship when they are married or when they find someone they love, that's the priority. And you're teaching them that the world doesn't revolve around them when it comes to you and your partnership. That's the best example you can give. And so if you haven't been on a date night lately or you haven't appreciated your partner in a very long time, be sure to do it. It's healthier for you. If you love this person and you are with them, it only makes sense you want to nurture them and nurture it and help your child see that's what a loving relationship is about. Number two, not that that first one was not a, a mouthful, but number two, why anxiety, ADHD, depression is so rampant. So what you wanna remember is we grew up from a different generation. So your child is growing up with many more different distractions, which is actually a good thing, but it also adds extra pressure. So when you think about social media, you think about Instagram, which we're gonna talk about later, but very often kids growing up are taught to be hard on themselves. Kids are taught to compare themselves to others. So kind of back to what I said about my philosophy about Start Loving Life, the two core foundations of what I teach is how to start loving yourself and how to start loving life. Well, because kids aren't taught that, what happens is they end up defeating themselves in their own mind without even realizing it because kids aren't taught to love themselves. So even when I say that, most people are like, well, like, what does that mean? Kids don't love themselves. So I'll give you an example. When you go to school and you have social studies, English, science, math, right? All those subjects. So let's say your child is a creative. Let's say your child is an artist. Let's, let's say your child loves to bake. Well, chances are your child may not excel in those 10 categories I just mentioned, five or 10 categories, right? But the school is using that as a guide as to whether how smart your kid is. So imagine at age six or whenever they go to school, they're already measuring their intelligence based on an education system that teaches your kid at the age of six that if they're not good in these subjects that we say, that your child is not smart. But the opposite is actually true because your child is born smart developing their unique qualities. Now the school system, and I'm not downing the school system, but I'm clearly just making it evident on how it fails many kids in the sense of 
empowering those children to develop what makes them unique. So think about it. So you have that component of not being able to be yourself at age six, determining how intelligent you are based on you excelling in these dumb subjects or the benchmarks they put in place as far as how far you should be along in your progression of education and at what point. And if you're a late bloomer, then all of a sudden, like they stick a label on you. So I want you to think about this stuff. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I want you to really question it. I want you to question it, not verbally, or, or but in your mind. And I want you to realize that every child has unique qualities. And unfortunately, the way the system is set up, not every child's able to develop it. And that's kind of what I do at Star Loving Life. I teach kids to develop themselves, their uniquenesses. I basically, and it sounds weird, but I give them permission to be them, something they're never given. And so anxiety, anxiety is nothing more than a long-term habit of negative thinking about oneself. That is it. Depression is a longer term version of negative thinking about oneself. That is it. So when you think about social media and kids are on Instagram and they're comparing themselves to others and they're, and I have kids that are focused on grades and trying to get the best grades and being perfectionist and getting frustrated when things don't go their way or just kids that are really defeating themselves and are super hard on themselves. That is why anxiety and depression are at an all time high. Now, the funny thing is most often it's not even the parents putting the pressure, it's the child. And they're doing that because in school, don't forget, we're taught to validate ourselves by our grades. We're taught to validate our worthiness by how well we do in class. And so with that in mind, it only makes sense that kids are driving themselves crazy trying to be perfect. And that really prevents them from trying new things because they don't want to mess up. Where life, as you all know, as I know, life is about messing up a lot and life is about learning from it and life is about moving on and life is about being more confident because you did mess up and you were able to move on. And so that's why anxiety and depression is so common. Now, what is the solution? Very simple. You teach a child how to increase their self-esteem by teaching them how to love themselves, by giving them permission to be themselves and teach them how to start loving life. And what does that mean? It means looking at life in a very different way. And that happens when you start loving yourself and you start accepting yourself and you start giving yourself credit for what makes you you, whatever that means. And I say that because everyone is born with different talents. Everyone's born with different uniquenesses, different likes, different dislikes. And when a child learns how to harness that, they become happier. When a child learns how to harness that, they become more confident. And when they feel better about themselves, it's like law of attraction, what you put out, you get back. So when you feel better about yourself, the world treats you better. And as far as ADD and ADHD, it goes back to my whole topic about education in the sense that we growing up, we suffered through sitting through classes we had no interest in. We suffered listening to like subjects that we had no interest in, but we were forced to. The kids of nowadays are freaking smart in the sense that they're not listening to something they have no interest in. And they don't have to. You know why? It's called ADD. But it's not even a problem. People use a la- they use it as a label. I have ADD. Put me in front of baseball. I hate baseball. I'll have ADD. Put me in front of, um, what were we watching the other day? 60 Minutes. I don't, I'm not a fan of that show. What? I'll have ADD. Right. So it's because your child does not want to suffer listening to things that does not interest them. Does that make them have a problem? No, not in my book and not in my Start Loving Life program. So be mindful of what these labels are and be understanding that these labels are nothing more than a label. And I've never met a child or worked with a child that was empowered by any label, any label other than uniquely amazing. So be mindful of what your child is going through. And another thing that I'm just going to add Ah, there you go, Alyssa, there you go, woman. Um, Another thing I want to add too is that if your child is telling you that they want to speak to somebody or they are saying they 
are not feeling good about themselves, listen to your child. I can't tell you how many parents have reached out um, and they say, you know, Connie, I saw your program. My daughter has been asking for months to talk to somebody, but she's fine. Like, I don't know what, you know, she seems fine. Like, you know, she has friends, her grades are great. I, I don't get it. You know, I'm, I'm just reaching out cause she's, you know, bugging me to reach out. And I say, okay. So then I meet the child and I will tell you nine times out of 10, that child will always say, thank God my mom reached out to you. I've been begging her. And what happens is from the outside, your kid might look fine and your kid might seem like they're social and they're getting the grades and they have everything going just like my career and making money early on, but there's so much more. And if your child is requesting to talk to someone, find someone. It really is important that your child is heard. And if they're requesting to talk to someone, definitely do your due diligence and find someone because I will tell you, many of the kids that I work with as a result are always kind of frustrated for a long period of time before that mom reaches out. So just something to keep in mind. The other thing is that I get a lot of questions on is medication or no medication. So sometimes all parents reach out and they'll say, hey, you know, my child has X, Y, and Z, could be ADD, ADHD, anxiety. You know, what are your thoughts on medication? So my thoughts on medication is this. I am a big fan of whatever makes you feel better. Now, medication, is it a long-term fix? No. Does it temporarily make you feel better? Yes. Am I a fan of that? Yes. So I say you do whatever you need to do to make your child feel better. However, understand the real solution lies within your child's self-esteem. When you teach your child how to feel better about themselves, how to love themselves, and how to start loving life, they will no longer need medication. Because what happens is when as your child takes medication, it suppresses, ugh, Wednesday night here, it suppresses their emotions. So they don't feel bad, but they also don't feel great. They kind of just feel like numb. And a lot of kids will say that. So that temporarily, tempor temporarily is helpful, but is that a long-term solution? No, I want my kids to feel really happy. And when my kids are down, I want them to feel that too, because they're going to learn how to navigate that and spin it to start to feel better. So medication is really a personal decision, but I also think there's no right or wrong answer. And like I said, anything that temporarily makes your child feel better, I am a huge fan. However, for long term, I think it's most important to teach your child as well as everyone really how to feel better on your own. And that starts with your own mind. And that really is the solution, teaching your child how to love themselves and how to start loving life. The other thing, let me just check timing here. Um, oh, it's already 8.04. All right, so the other thing is Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, all that. So sometimes, you know, if you have a kid and your, your daughter's, or and I'm gonna just use daughter because it's easier, but I mean daughter or son, if they're in their room for hours, know that that's normal. So I wanted to just think about this. So your kids in school all day, they're stressing out about grades, who's inviting them to what party, what cliques they're involved in, what sports they're involved in. When they get home, they're kind of donezo, right? And so if your child is that child and they've been at school all day and they've been like overly stimulated and stressed out just because they're putting stress on themselves, your child is gonna wanna go on video games. Your child is gonna wanna go on Instagram. Your child's gonna go on Snapchat. Like that is normal. So sometimes I have parents who think that it's excessive and I will tell you kids are on this all day every day. Now if your child is on Instagram and it makes them feel bad because they're comparing themselves to all the pretty girls in the filters, then yeah, I would probably discourage Instagram because I would never encourage something that doesn't make your child feel good. I think Instagram is a great platform to inspire people to maybe want to do different things, but kids should never be on anything that makes them feel bad. However, do know that kids are on these platforms a lot. YouTube, especially for the common, for the common, for the younger kids, really isn't as popular as it used to be. Now it's TikTok, which are those short, you know, 30 second, whatever videos, and kids are into that. They find that funny. Now, are you going to understand what they're watching? No. 
you're from a different generation. Do they find it funny? Yeah, they find it funny. Do you want to take that away from them? No. So just know, and even with Snapchat, like same thing. And sometimes I have parents that put guidelines on their phone, you know, their kid's phone, or they put time limits. And what happens is kids are socializing through social media. Kids are socializing through Snapchat. So if you limit your child on Snapchat, what happens is it makes the child feel left out because they're not being included in group chats because they're not available because they're not on the phone. Now, I'm certainly not saying that a child should not fulfill their responsibilities like schoolwork and at home and socializing with their fam family. You know, I'm not saying that like those are the priorities. But I do want to let you know for this younger generation and really for everybody that the phone has become such an important component for socialization and specifically for kids in school. So if you do feel like your kid's in their room a lot, don't worry, it's normal. If your kid is super depressed, like, yeah, reach for help and seek out help. But do know kids need to kind of regroup and really are at a place that sometimes they do need space because of school and stresses and things like that. And then also the platforms of if your child's on the phone excessively, know that that's kind of common. Again, they should be fulfilling their other responsibilities. If they're not, that's a whole different conversation, but just know that kids are communicating and socializing on Snapchat and, um, and they're watching TikTok and YouTube and all that. Just something else to add. I know sometimes I have some moms that want to engage with their child in a much more meaningful way. And, you know, they ask a million questions about school and grades and kids are like, oh, I don't want to hear about this. And so the kids aren't really engaging. But one thing I always say and I recommend for my moms that if you know your child likes something specific, even if you have no clue what it is, ask them about it. They love to talk about stuff that they love. Um, it could be like Fortnite, like, oh, all right, what level? I don't even know Fortnite, really. I just know Fortnite, but like, all right, what level are you at? Or, or like, what is it? How does it work? And you can ask them about it. Like kids love talking about what they love. Um, I know when I work with certain clients, they tell me about their favorite YouTuber and they'll tell me why and you see their eyes light up. Or I have some kids that love anime and you know, and I'll say, well, well, what are you watching on anime? And they're like, oh, I love this, I love this. And so if you wanna engage with your child in a much more meaningful way, ask them about stuff that they love because they definitely do enjoy talking about what they love, which is part of the Start Loving Life philosophy too. The more you focus on what you love, the better you feel. And if there are things that you don't love, that's cool too because it's your life. And so of course, in school, you have to do what you have to do to get through school. I guess that was a sign from the universe. <laughs> As my video just paused. Anyway, if there are any other questions, a big shout out to Lisa Marie. Your baby's so adorable. Um, but so for more information, just know you can check out my website at startlivinglife.com. I am a teen life coach. I work with kids. I teach kids how to overcome anxiety, increase their self-esteem, and overcome self-doubt in as little as 30 days. I do a 30-day program where we meet once a week over the course of four weeks, and I teach your kid. Ugh. I teach your kids the first part, how to start loving themselves, how to own who they are, how to develop who they are and who they are. And then second part is how to start loving life. How do you look at life in a more positive way? How do you, um, you know, react to things in a more positive way? And to Teresa, I do do virtual meetings. Ideally, I love in person just because I feel like it's more of a, I feel like it's more fun and I feel like it's more personal, but I do do FaceTime and I do do Zoom and I do have kids that I still speak with in college and I have clients all over the United States. So I do do FaceTime, but I still do love um, in person. So yeah, startlovinglife.com. So I hope I was able to answer all your questions. Time flew by, really. But um, thank you so much for tuning in. If you do have any other questions or you need any other help or you need any advice, please feel free to reach out to me. You can email me at Connie at startlovinglife.com or you can go to my website, startlovinglife.com and there's a contact page. But um, I just want to give another big shout out also to my cousin, Teresa, who's created this beautiful group and I love her so much and I am so proud of her and she's a very special person in my heart and in my life and um, I appreciate her hanging out and uh, inviting me to do tonight and I've had to my pumpkin here keeping me company so uh, oh Stephanie I love you so it's so nice this is like a family reunion I never get to see this part of my family but um Thank you guys so much for tuning in and um, I love you very much. And again, any questions, go to startlovinglife.com and you have a good night. Thanks, Carrie.